So the question is, is Epcot's holiday cookie stroll actually worth it? Well, I just had five cookies for $12.50 and I haven't died yet. One cookie away from completing the holiday cookie stroll yet again. Here we go. afternoon from Epcot where we're here to take a stroll, a cookie stroll that is. Uh, it's going to be a fun day filled with sweet treats. Hopefully we don't get as sick as we did last time I attempted this last year. Here it's the same cookies but maybe a second round will do the trick. So if you're ready, let's go have some sweet treats on this year's cookie stroll. So here we are at the entrance of Epcot for the Festival of the Holidays with Chip and Dale greeting us. All right, we're gonna come over here and grab ourselves a festival passport. So this is our ticket for the holiday stroll. It's really just kind of a passport stamping book, but we've got these five cookies and then the bonus cookie at the end. So the first one's gonna be in Germany, the Linzer cookie. Let's head over there and check it out. Okay, we're gonna head into Pin Traders as we always do to keep adding to our Epcot collection. So I ended up getting the Moana Journey of Water pin. It's the first Epcot pin that I got of a pavilion that hasn't been built yet. But we are standing right about where it's supposed to go. So you got Spaceship Earth right over here. And behind me, you've got the Nemo and Friends attraction. And right here, which used to be the old character meet and greet, will soon be Moana's Journey of Water. I'll put a concept art of what it's supposed to look like in the video. It's supposed to be like a water-themed maze, intricately themed. Now the Journey of Water Pavilion was supposed to open in 2021, but my guess is that based on the current status of the building that sits on that spot, it's probably been pushed back. Now here's a look back toward Spaceship Earth and the seas with Nemo and friends, and you'll see the building that is currently sitting on the plot of land where Journey of Water is supposed to go is still standing. In fact, a lot of the inside interior decoration adorning the windows are still there. You can even see the awnings where the signs, the directional signs used to be. And I feel like construction on this area was zooming right along and then, of course, when everything shut down, it just stopped. Okay, we are at the Bavaria Holiday Kitchen where our first cookie of the cookie stroll is the Linzer cookie. All right. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so we got our first cookie, the Linzer cookie stamp. And uh, not bad, it's, it's kind of a, it almost looks like a, a jammy dodger from England. If I recall from last year, because these are the same cookies from last year, everyone said that I missed the mark on this one, that this one was the best cookie, and actually I didn't like it at all. So let's see if, if it's just me and I just did a bad review the first time. All right, here we go. It's not bad. Is it the worst cookie? I don't know yet. I'm gonna have to keep trying to see. As you can see, it's like a little sandwich cookie. Maybe you can see that, there you go. It's just a little jelly sandwich in between the two cookies. Maybe I just had a bad taste bud that day. All right, so the next one is cookie number two, which is in the American Adventure Pavilion. And it's the chocolate crinkle cookie. I remember that being very good from last year. 
Um, and the guy who was uh, ringing me up did say, when I told him I was doing the cookie stroll, said that, oh, be ready. It gets harder and harder as you go because the cookies get sweeter and sweeter. So, I'm like, you don't have to tell me twice. I remember. All right. On to our next cookie. So here we are in the American Adventure Pavilion and over at American Holiday Table, they have the next cookie, the chocolate crinkle cookie. I remember this one being very good. Okay, so the next stop was the American Adventure Pavilion where we got the chocolate crinkle cookie, which is kind of tastes like a fudge cookie in a way. And it's got powdered sugar on top for $2.50. I also got bottle of water because I just want to prepare for the sugar rush ahead. All right, let's give this cookie a shot. I remember this cookie being very good. Mm. Oh yeah, this is by far my favorite. I like this one better than the Linzer one. No doubt. So far I like this one and then the Linzer one. But we still have, what is it, three more? Two more? I can't remember. I think it's three more. Yeah. Mm. It's a messy cookie, but it's got that fudgy taste to it. So good. Mm. I could eat this all day. Now it's time, oh, and I forgot to show you the stamp. There's our second stamp. And it looks like the next one is the black and white cookie, which is located between Morocco and France. If I remember, this one was the super sweet one that kicked my butt. And it's perfectly put right in the middle. So let's give this next one a shot and see if it's just as intimidating as I remember. So here we are at our next booth to get our next cookie, our third cookie. The black and white cookie for $2.50. This is the one that's decked out in icing and uh, nearly did me in the last time. Let's see if it does me in this time. So trying to find a place to eat this can be rather tricky, except I think I found the spot overlooking the Friendship Boat Station right over here on top of this trash can. Oh yes, trash can videography. Okay, so we are going to try the black and white cookie. Oh boy, this is the one that did me in last time. Let's see if it does me in again this time. Here we go. It's as thick as I remember. It's basically a sugar cookie, but with an incredibly thick icing. I think this is like vanilla flavor on this side. And that's chocolate. However, it almost tastes like the cookie's a little stale. It also got the stamp Except they put it on stamp number four and not number three, but I don't think it matters. The next one's the gingerbread cookie, which is in the World Showcase Events Pavilion. I'm like getting close to the camera because I don't know if you could be hear me out of this music. So we're gonna head over to the Events Pavilion and check out the gingerbread cookie. And I didn't know if I said earlier, man, my hair is all over the place. But I think I have to rank that one we just got, the black and white one, is the lowest. I think it goes the chocolate crinkle cookie is number one, and then the tinsel cookie is number two, and then that one, the black and white one, is number three. I think, is that not? I think Mickey's coming around. Let's go say hi to Mickey in his festive attire, so I don't fall down these steps. Oh, check it out. It's Mickey and the gang in their festive attire. Hey, Goof! Yeah! What's going on, guys? Hey! 
How fun. Okay, we're gonna head into the World Show Place for some neat festival offerings. It's also where our next cookie is. And right when you first walk in, you're greeted with Marshmallow and Olaf for a great photo opportunity. Okay, we're going to the Festival Favorites, which is right here, right when you first walk in on the right, to try the gingerbread cookie. If I recall, this one was a good one. Okay, so we ended up getting our fourth cookie, despite the fact that we've skipped this one twice now. They're gonna have to eventually stamp it at some point, but we got our gingerbread cookie for $2.50. Here's the little guy for you. Looks pretty good. Let's see if it's good though. Nothing's worse than crunchy gingerbread. It needs to be like soft. Oh, this looks pretty soft. Let's give it a shot. Also, got even more water. It just helps curb the sweetness. Okay, here we go. So it's a, it's a soft gingerbread, which is good, because nothing is worse than stale gingerbread. I still think the chocolate crinkle cookie is my favorite, but the next one is the peppermint pinwheel cookie from Canada. And if I recall, that cookie was terrible. All right, here we are at the Yukon Holiday Kitchen where we're gonna have our final cookie, the peppermint pinwheel cookie. I recall, this was not a good cookie. What a good one to end on. So the question is, is Epcot's holiday cookie stroll actually worth it? Well, I just had five cookies for $12.50 and I haven't died yet. So there's that for you. So I'm one cookie away from completing the holiday cookie stroll yet again. Here we go. I think it's better than it was last year, but to me it just tastes like, I don't know, it tastes like a Pillsbury cookie with peppermint flavor. I guess this is the palate cleanser you need after all the sweets you've had all day long, but it's okay. I think if I had to make my final rankings, I would go, the best one is the chocolate crinkle cookie, followed by the gingerbread one. I like the gingerbread one. And then after the gingerbread one, I would go Linzer, then I'd go this one, and then I'd go the black and white. So I think that is my final standings for the holiday cookie stroll of the year 2020. Now, I get to go over and get our complimentary cookie, which is a giant sugar cookie. So, oh boy, more cookies. Okay, we're here for the final booth to get our completer cookie. The mini peppermint cookie. That peppermint sundae looks awful good too, but it's not free like the mini peppermint cookie will be. All right, let's go redeem our completer cookie. So we got the completer cookie to finish up our cookie stroll quest. All right, let's give this a shot. I'll just take that. Oh. Thank you. Jen, everybody, coming in and... <laughs> completely destroying my cookie. Mm. My winning cookie. It's just a sugar cookie. But it's cute. It's got mini. And like, it's like a... It's a very it's not, thick It's like icing. a print on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a sugar thing and then they slap the... <laughs> the, 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 the mini the, bow on top. Yeah. I mean, I did all the work. Go right ahead. <laughs> Jen just got off work and decided to join me at the most opportune time, right when I'm completing the cookie stroll and just consumed thousands of calories. 
Yep, well. <laughs> the cookie's yours. <laughs> Thank you. So to commemorate our victory tonight, I think I'm gonna go over and buy that cookie stroll cookie jar that we saw on display does the other night. It does. So we don't have a cookie jar, so this will be the first time, and it's a good reminder of how much fun we had. And how much cookies you ate. <laughs> exactly, how many calories I consumed. So, I'm glad you enjoyed that cookie. Yeah, I didn't have to pay for anything. <laughs> You're already getting a sugar rush. <laughs> All right, let's go get that cookie jar. What do you say? So here is the cookie jar we're gonna be getting to commemorate our victory. It's got Chip and Dale on the top for $29.99. All right, Jen, we're gonna be getting this. So that's gonna do it for us here for another night of the Tourist Trek's 12 Days of Christmas. Jen came in at the last second. I wish I had more cookies. <laughs> there was plenty of cookies, trust me. We can get you as many cookies as you want. <sighs> Five uh, cookies for $2.50 each. Oh, is that so, what it was? Yeah, it came out to be about $12.50 and you get six cookies total. That's so not it's not a bad value. So the real question of this video is, was the cookie stroll worth it? Well, for $12.50, six cookies, probably not best to eat it all by yourself. If you have someone you can split it with, <laughs> then maybe it's not a bad value. But uh, luckily we paced ourselves so we didn't get as sick this time as we did the last time. Yeah, I paced myself too. <laughs> anyway, if you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. So if you want to join our adventures and future 12 Nights of Christmas, be sure to hit the subscribe button and do what, Jen? Tap that notification bell to become a super subscriber. So until next time, see, see you, you real soon. soon.